So N-acetylcysteine is an amino acid, essentially a, a precursor building block for glutathione as well. The big kind of um, tripeptide amino acids to make glutathione are cysteine, glutamine, and glycine. And so NAC has a lot of great benefits. There's some antiviral qualities to NAC. It can help as a mucus expectorant. It kind of breaks down mucus, which is very helpful if you have lung or upper respiratory issues. There's some antiviral qualities to it. It's going to bump up glutathione. They use NAC in hospital for acetaminophen or Tylenol toxicity. If you go in, your kid overdoses or you overdose with Tylenol, they're going to give you NAC, typically in an IV form, to help bring back your liver. So there's a lot of great benefits of it. Even conventional medicine sees it and knows that, which is really cool. Now, NAC can actually help with hair loss. It does it via a couple of different means. So number one, NAC, because it's a building block to glutathione, it's a very powerful antioxidant precursor. And so there's a lot of theories in regards to hair loss that oxidative stress is part of why you're going to lose hair. You have like the DHT theory, that's dihydrotestosterone, and men have more testosterone. Therefore, that testosterone can go downstream to DHT. DHT is known to decrease blood flow and shrink and miniaturize that terminal thick hair to that villous kind of baby hair, thin it out. You're going to lose color, It'd be more translucent and smaller. And so you can have this reactive oxygen species caused by the um, the lack of antioxidants that can cause hair loss. The DHT can cause that hair follicle to shrink. And so with NAC, because it's a powerful antioxidant, it's going to go down the pathway of making more glutathione and it's going to help with decreasing this hormone-like signaler called prostaglandin D2. We'll go over a couple of studies here right now real fast. Here's one study showing the NAC um, in using the treatment of early onset androgenic alopecia. This is like your male pattern baldness. Women can still have this too, but because guys have more testosterone than women, obviously they're going to have more DHT go downstream. And so NAC, this is one study. They had 100 people. This is actually a government study that was done in the last year or two, which is really cool, that 100 people in the study, 18 to 30, and they had a couple of groups. They had like, I think, a control group. They had a group with... Uh, minoxidil or Rogaine, and they had a group with NAC and then both, which is interesting. And they were looking at areas of the vertex and the frontotemporal, the sides here, and then right at the crown on the back of the head. So really interesting conclusion. On the basis of findings of the current study, we can conclude that the role of trichoscopy, this is them looking at the hair follicles under a microscope while on the scalp, in increasing the accuracy for diagnosing hair disorders as well to detect response or failure, the treatment NAC improves significantly most of the trichoscopic features of androgenic alopecia, and it was generally tolerable, and side effects encountered did not necessitate the stopping of treatment. This is great because NAC, guess what? It can help with OCD, right? It can help with trichotillomania, people like pulling their hair, picking at their skin, right? Doing like kind of finicky things like that and that involve an OCD component. It can help with a methylation. It can help with um, with your neurotransmitters, with dopamine and serotonin. So there's a lot of benefits of NAC. It can help with glutathione. So, I mean, you get exposed to toxins in the atmosphere, you're going to have extra glutathione to deal with that oxidative stress. So this is really cool because it's nice to have supplements that we can do that aren't going to have a ton of side effects and are going to have a lot of benefits. 